Hey YouTube, Josh here with Tipsy Python, your casual gadget learning Python. I'm back with another video, and today we're really getting into the basics. I got a couple goals for today's video. Number one, let's talk through what is Python. Like when someone says Python, what do they mean? And number two, let's get it installed on your machine and get you running some code. And all the while, I'm going to be enjoying myself a nice pour of this Will It Pot Still Bourbon. You know, this one doesn't get a whole lot of love in the bourbon community, but it's not a terrible bottle. And We'll talk about that a little more at the end of the video. So first things first, what is Python? Well, if you Google it, you're gonna get the canned answer that Python is a object-oriented, higher level interpreted, uh, dynamically typed programming language. And if you really wanna talk shop and get into the details, by all means, Google it. There's a lot of good videos and documents out there. But today, there's really just one part of that that I wanna focus on. And I'm not saying that the rest isn't important, but I'm just saying that, that myself, I'm very much a hands-on learner. So I can talk theory about the different terms all day, but it doesn't mean a lot to me until I get to practicing things. And for that reason, I think we just kind of focus on the interpreted part because that's the important one that I want to talk about today. What is interpreted? Well, it's exactly what it sounds like. It's interpreting from one language to another. Speaking very basically, our computers, the way that they come out of the box, they don't understand the Python programming language. And much like if I picked up a research paper from some famous uh, Japanese biologist, it might be perfectly well written. There might be a lot of good information in there, just I myself wouldn't be able to understand it. I would need someone to interpret it from Japanese into English for me. And it's really those two concepts that when we talk about interpretation, we're talking about the language and the interpreter itself. There's two parts of Python that I wanna talk through today. The first one is the actual source code, the interpreter. And this is the piece of languages that always kind of confused me when I was getting to coding because I was thinking like, if the plan is that I'm gonna pick this up and I'm gonna start writing Python, then what do I need to download it for? Really, that's the part that we're gonna to download today. We're gonna to download the Python source code that includes the interpreter that we pass a series of commands into. It parses and then compiles the Python into a format that our machines can understand and execute for us. And while this is what some people refer to as Python, really the majority of times when we say Python, we're talking about the language specification itself. We're talking about writing something in the language of Python. And I think the idea of language is pretty self-explanatory. Like Just like in English, we got nouns and verbs and adjectives and, and gerunds and all that, Python has its own set of keywords and operators and objects and, and they're all arranged in a certain specification that we all agree on that the interpreter can use to parse up and then compile to a code that it can explain to our computer and then our machine uses that series of steps to perform actions on our behalf. And don't get me wrong, I hate these little like semantic nuances where you have to understand it, but this is a common one that when people say Python they mean one or the other. Most of the time it's language, sometimes it's the interpreter. Anyhow, Let's get to it. How do you install Python and get it running for yourself? First thing you do is pop open your machine. Let's go to python.org. There's a lot of really great information on this page. I mean, if we go to the documentation, there's a whole beginner section. And, and if I was new to this, this is where I'd start reading at because it breaks things down in real simple terms that are easy to understand, they're actionable, they got a lot of great examples, and I encourage you to check that out. But today we're doing it the Tipsy Python way. I'm going straight to the Downloads tab. And right at the top here, download the latest version for Windows. If you have one of these other operating systems, go ahead, do what works for you, but I'm running Windows. Just clicking on it, I have a executable that got downloaded, so I'm gonna pop this guy open. Looking at these options here, I have multiple users on my machine, so I'm gonna uncheck this first option. If it isn't a big deal, then go ahead and leave it checked. I am gonna add Python 3.8 to pass because I think this can save me a lot of heartache later, depending on how you use it. And just click install now. Everything that my computer needs to understand the Python syntax is being downloaded right now. All right, and it says setup was successful. That took all of a couple minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and close this out. Now I'm back at the home screen of my computer and I know what you're thinking like, okay, that was pretty simple, but but now what? Well, really, there's a few ways that people use Python. Now, uh, the first one I'm gonna go through is from the command line from the Python shell. This is a very common one. So uh, at Windows, you can either open CMD or, or I like to use PowerShell. I'm gonna open PowerShell and I'm just gonna type pi. Notice that there, it drops me, it says 
Python 3.8.2, which of course is the version that we downloaded, and then I have these three dashes. And what this means is that I'm in the Python interactive session. This is like a one-on-one -on -one session with me and the interpreter. I'm not giving it a script to run. It's just waiting for me. It's saying, hey man, give me some commands. I'm ready to do my thing. All I have to do is type the commands in. So let's start real simple. This is the example you're gonna see everywhere. I'm gonna go print, open parentheses, close parentheses. Then inside of the parentheses, I'm gonna put double quotes for a string and I'm gonna type hello world. Then just push enter and it spits it back to me, hello world. So we gave the command, I want you to print the string hello world back to me and it just did it. Now you're not gonna write productionalized code this way where every time you wanna run the script, you're gonna open up the shell and do something. I, I mean, there are some use cases where you can have like command line interfaces and it's good for that kind of thing. But most of the time, this interactive session is just more of like a, a development exercise that when I wanna try out some commands and see how they work, I'm gonna pop the Python shell open and type them in, try it myself, see what the outputs are, and then I'll work those into a script. You've heard me say that a couple of times now, like the Python script. What are you talking about? What is a script? Well, a script is, is just a text file. It's like everything else on your computer. So let's, let's make one right now. We just installed Python and as part of it, it comes with idle. Now let's go to the start menu. I'm gonna scroll down in here and I'm going to find Python 3.8. Now Python idle, I-D-L-E, integrated development and learning environment. Let's click into that. And when it opens up, you're gonna see that it opened up, guess what, another Python shell. Oh man, and we can run our commands in here just like we did at the other screen. But the advantage that you're gonna get out of idle is that it allows us to write a file that we save on our computer and we can put our commands in there. Let's, let's take a look how to do that. I'm going to file, new file, inside here. I'm printing my command. And then I'm gonna say run run module, it has to save, that's fine with me. I'm gonna save it on my desktop as hello.py. It's gonna save the file and then it gets executed and we see the output in this shell type of area. Now, I know that this is kind of a trivial example and you're thinking like, what's the value? But, but the value is this, that when we're scripting, we can put a lot of commands where at the shell, we're just writing one at a time. In a script, we can put a whole bunch of stuff in here. And at the end of it, we can have multiple lines of Python execute at the same time. So I have a couple in here. Again, I'm gonna run these. Okay. And it printed hello. It ran through the rest of my script, these comments basically just to get ignored by Python. And then it printed end. Again, this is a really simple example, but I think you could see that, okay, as I start chaining these commands together, as my programs become more complex, it's kind of advantageous for me to save my commands to a file. And completely candidly, I'm not the biggest idle guy. Like there's a lot of different IDEs that people use. PyCharm is a big one. Spider is a big one. Um, a lot of folks, myself included, like we prefer text editors. Like I use Sublime Text, which doesn't have the features that an IDE necessarily does, but has plugins where you can get a lot of the same thing. So I use Sublime, there's Notepad++, there's Atom, a lot of tutorials I can use VS Code. Like all these are solid options for writing your Python. And if that wasn't enough options, I'm gonna give you one more. Like there's a big movement of people that are using uh, what are called notebooks that are basically these, these text editors where you can write code and you can execute it and you can write notes and, and visuals all in the same place. They're very, very nice. Now we can set one up ourselves using the Jupyter module, or we can use Google's free service, Google Colab. I'm gonna open that up now. So if I just look for Google Colab, the first link here takes me to it. There's a really nice intro page. I'm just gonna open a new notebook myself. It's gonna make me log in, that's fine. And after signing in with my Gmail account, it brings me to this blank notebook environment. As you can imagine, you can type in code here too, if I can type. And when I execute, it takes just a second the first time to start running this thing and it outputs the text. 
This is a really nice option if you had any trouble installing Python on your machine. You really don't need it because you can get the environment to run Python online. And in doing it this method, you can store all of your notebooks in your Google Drive and have access to all your code that way too. And that's really it for today's video. I hope by now you have Python installed, you have a somewhat understanding of the difference between the language and the interpreter, and you're ready to get crunching out some code. And that's what we're gonna cover in the next episode about data types and variables. But before we wrap up today, I do want to talk a little bit about this Willet pot still bourbon. I and mean, this is pretty good, uh, 94 proof. Now, honestly, this one doesn't get a lot of love in the bourbon community. And I don't really know why. It's not, it's not terrible. It's just mediocre. I think it's a little overpriced, but you know, it's like 35 or 40 bucks. You do get this cool bottle from it, which a lot of people say that when you're done drinking this bourbon, you can use the bottle to make a really cool, um, Never mind. Yeah, really not bad. All your staple bourbon characteristics are in there. You got some oak, you got some caramel, a little bit of vanilla, definitely sweet from the corn mash. I'd say if there is one problem with this bourbon, it's in the packaging itself. Like I feel like the packaging over promises a little bit because you have some other bourbons like let's say Rowan's Creek also comes from Willet. Very unassuming bottle, but very, very good. Much better than this one in my opinion. I feel like the move here would be for Willet to like turn this juice into something like a Johnny Drum gold label position like between the base Johnny Drum and between private stock at 94 proof I think it would fit in very well there and then you take one of the better whiskeys like Rowan's Creek you put it in this fancy bottle charge the same price as where it's at right now it would command that price and people would feel a lot better paying for it so although you really can't knock this bottle I think there's a lot of better ones at the price but Hey, it's a cool one to have on the shelf. Like who doesn't want to have the actual like pot still sitting there? It's a, it's a cool bottle. That's all I got today, friends. Until next time, Tipsy Python.